I'm Kyle Curtis Plett. You like to talk about movies? So do I. I'm on YouTube where I do interviews, reviews, rankings, live streams, unboxings, and much more. You can also catch me on Facebook or Twitter at Return of the Living Flet. I have huge passion for what I do. I love talking about horror. I love talking about movies in general. And with that being said, keep on streaming. This show is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find the other great shows on the network, head over to the Deluxe Edition Network.com. Can I stay there? <laughs> After what we've been through, of Hello and welcome to another episode of Deluxe Edition. I am your host, Casey Shearer. Joining me once again, Ray, the podcaster. What's going on, Casey? Not much, Ray. Another incredible interview we just had. Absolutely amazing interview. This uh, lady that we had on, Patrika Darbo, has been in uh, over 120 different movies and television shows a lot of uh, my friends recognize her from her seinfeld appearances uh mm-hmm. but she's been in a ton of different tv shows and uh, one of my favorite uh horror movies that we talk about with her uh hatchet with yeah. kane hodder and uh, another friend of the show richard really mm-hmm. um just a really funny lady this this was a really fun episode my face hurts actually from laughing oh she was amazing and she was in one of my favorite movies which was the burbs yeah, and uh, it's cool that we got to talk to her about both of those movies. Yeah, yeah, this was a really, really fun episode. Um, so stay tuned. I'm just going to do the plugs very quickly. I'm going to start by saying uh, you can check my co-host Ray out at the Ten Cent Beer Night podcast, and you can get his T-shirts over at uh, tpublic.com. And uh, right. if you're watching the show, I'm wearing one of these very comfortable shirts as we speak. I'm just trying to figure out if I can get the logo on the shirt any bigger than I got it. Because, <laughs> man, I did a good job of fitting that thing on there. It's it's a big logo. It's a but big hey, goddamn logo, man. <laughs> people are going to be drunk. They're going to need to know what it says. That's and true. Uh, now I, I can say, I can say to people when they say, what does that mean? I can say, just take a picture of it. You won't forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. We are a part of the Deluxe Edition Network over at deluxeeditionnetwork.com. And uh, the podcast of the month this month is The Return of the Living Flat. Kyle does uh, movie reviews, unboxings, trailer reviews, and uh, he's been having a lot of good interviews and watch alongs as well we are on instagram and twitter at deluxe edition pod and if you want to support the show you can go to patreon.com slash deluxe edition pod or buy a t-shirt over at whatamaneuver.net slash collections slash deluxe dash edition or find our previous shows over at deluxe edition dot show yes and if you're so inclined please Go and make a comment on one of our posts on Instagram or Facebook or wherever, because it does help out, you know, just a a simple comment of, hey, or word, or what's up, anything like that. It does make a difference. As silly as it sounds, it does make a difference for the algorithm. So, you know, you can help us out and do that. And if you like this interview, go back and check out some of our other ones, because uh, Ray and I have been really killing it with these uh chats i'm not calling them interviews anymore right they're chats i i yeah i think it's just hanging out yeah it's just us hanging out with our friends that's what i like to call it so do us a favor and tell your friends about deluxe edition and all the other great shows on the network over at deluxe edition network.com and uh now here's patrika Let's do it. Mine's not working your SOL because I don't know how to work this thing. So <laughs> I'll just yell. That's fine. <laughs> our our former co-hosts that we had on our shows prior to uh, joining forces, they would have uh, really been sticklers about all this. Yeah. But we we just uh, we let it ride. Yeah, we're doing the best we can. 
That's me doing the best. <laughs> <I can. laughs> I'm a tech dinosaur. I choose not to be a Rex because then I can't use my arms. And <laughs> <laughs> well, Patrika, ah! growing up, I remember seeing you in uh, so many different shows. Thank you. I apologize because I'm in my home and I have a dog who's a Chihuahua. Who, if something's happening 40 miles down the street, she's gonna bark at it. So I can't. I'm gonna ask my husband, please take her to the other room with you if you can. And I'm back, guys. Yes, you grew up with me. That makes yes. me feel really old. I was trying to get past that part, but it's okay. It's okay. No, don't feel old. You look great. Thank you very much. I know how old you are, but we won't say because you look you look fabulous. I look fabulous. You do. So uh, you've been in so many different shows, different strokes, punky brewster. Growing Pains, Mama's House, Roseanne, Saved by the Bell, Seinfeld, Step by Step, Married with Children. Those are just some of the ones that I remember seeing you in. But, I mean, you've been in, your IMDb page says, I think, 120 different credits. <laughs> I've done a lot, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to talk about, what I want to start ta uh, talking about first is, uh, I believe that you might be our first Emmy winner. That we've had on the show. Should I go get it so you can see it? <laughs> no. Yes, absolutely. Oh, well, it's yeah. just one second. Dun, dun, dun. There it is. Awesome. Thank you very much. It is. It is pretty awesome. I will tell you the night that I won it, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Changing arms and waving your arms. The next morning, my biceps hurt so bad. I can't raise my arms. How, is, how heavy is that thing? It's, it's like a, eight to ten pounds. Wow. So you're dressed to the nines and you're yeah, having a martini and went in. Yeah, it's great. The martini, yeah. yeah, it's great. <laughs> it was crazy, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's <laughs> talk about that show, Acting Dead. You know, it's we, we had a whole film season in the can, but, you, you know, this business is trying to get some money, and I'm working with the producer now because we'd love to have one of the streaming nations or stations pick us up. And then start doing some more of them because I don't know if you've seen any of it. And I, I did. I, I, it's like it, it's just a fun thing. So many people work so hard on, and the production values are tremendous. And the acting, hello, how many they went are fabulous. <laughs> so you know, it was just a wonderful adventure. And you know, streaming is the future of television. So it's, it's crazy. Yeah, there's so much stuff out there to. Uh, and this was this was the first time that an Emmy was won in this category, right? It was a yes. I'm the first actress to win it. Yes. Yeah. What was the category again? It was short. Best. It's best actress in uh, short form. Yeah, I loved it. I, I found it on Vimeo. I think. I, I think I, that's where Brian has it up. Stuff. There's some. It, yeah. There's so much. The production values were great and stuff. So it was. It was fun. It was so much fun. And, and you know, we were having fun making it. And I don't think we realized because we really didn't have a home for it until the, the Academy created the short form. And suddenly there was a place for us um, because even though it's it's about zombies and <laughs> ghosts and stuff like that, it really didn't fit into a, uh, a dramatic category to be in the daytime Emmys. So uh, it was uh, we, we it just everything happened at one time for the good. So. Yeah, I'll I'll put a link up in uh, the description for for the show. It was it was done really well. I don't know if I really liked it a lot. Um, I think maybe one of the things that I liked about it is how uh, his name is Brian, right? Yeah, Brian. Because yeah, he, how he did the narration behind it. It kind of reminded me of that show, Arrested Development. How they did that. Yes, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's really good. And Brian, you know, is not a big on-camera person as much as he's a VO person because he does a lot of anime characters. And he just is like, he's, he goes to a lot of cons all over the world to be his anime piece person. I don't understand any of that either, but it, he, it's an amazing. It, 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 very lucrative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't understand that anime stuff either. I I travel the country for uh, for work, and I saw that in one of the towns I was in, there was a, a convention, like a Comic Con little thing, and it was it was really small, and there was only about I think four celebrity actors, or uh, they. I found out later they were voiceover actors, and they were voiceover for this uh, anime stuff. I walked in one door and just out the other door, like I made a big circle around. The 
But it's because you'll never recognize them unless they're talking to you. Um, when I was when I was a, the governor uh, last year for um, uh, the TV Academy here in Los Angeles, my co-governor is the the voice of Porky Pig. Oh, and, really? As he was walking down the street, you'd never know him, but he's also been in uh, many award-winning films with his voice and cartoons and. And besides that, when he does something, something duck and I mean, just uh, numerous things like that. So it's crazy. Very cool. Do you like, uh, do you like doing the shorts? You know, I've had a really great time with it. I was, I was nominated for a daytime. I've been nominated four times, two time winner. One they took away from me, but so I still have uh, virtually two wins and four nominations, but um, one of them was for the short um, Studio City that I was nominated, let's see, a year and a half ago, two years ago now. So there, I mean, there, again, there's so great, so much great writing, so much great acting, um, writing, producing, everything is in those. And it's virtually um, an episodic television that you would see on NBC, CBS at, at nighttime now. Um, but they're just, they're only like 15 minutes to 30 minutes long. Yeah. Yeah. I watched uh, Acting Dead and, and I think each episode is only less than 10 minutes long. So mm -hmm. I watched it in, you know, less than an hour, uh, the whole thing. A big part of that is, is that the, uh, the current generations are having a problem with anything over 10 minutes long. So I think that's a big part of why these shorts are so important now is that the uh, attention span is so the short. A, the kids have attention span of a gnat and it's yeah. not, you know, it's, and everything is in that phone, everything. Yep. It's like, you know, and, but at the same time, you have to realize that what two or three years ago, Tangerine, which was an uh, Oscar nominated film was shot on an iPhone. Yeah. So uh, the business has changed so much since I did the Jeffersons or give me a break years ago. I mean, <laughs> yeah. The whole thing is, really different um now most of the time we're auditioning this is where i would audition you would be the casting people and this is me doing my audition hmm. used to be we'd go into a room the casting director would be there so with the director the producers and you do the thing for them now everything yeah. by the time i get this far i'm so exasperated and so keyed up because i've punched the wrong button several times <laughs> to get here that it's like <laughs> crazy time do, do you That's think crazy. that hurts movies now that they're not doing it in person to get the actual feel for the actor? You know, I, I, I again, I'm old school, so it's hard for me to say that because I don't, I can't work my phone. There's 4 million things that phone can do and I know mm -hmm. how to do three. So it, that, but that, you give it to a two year old and they're like, <laughs> Oh, believe me, my kids, my kids can work my stuff way better than I can. It's, it's amazing. And um, not much in this life t intimidates me, but the fear of pushing the wrong button intimidates me that I'm going to either blow it up or not be able to get back where right. I've committed to be. It just makes you nuts. You would not be a good president then if you're afraid of pushing the wrong <laughs> button. <laughs> we wouldn't, we would never, honey, if I was president, we would never get in a situation where there was a button needed. to. Ah, be. There we go. Trust that's, me on that's that. That's a one. great answer. <laughs> Patrika Darbo, twenty twenty four. Yeah, there you go. Woo! <laughs> Except I, I'm not sure if some of my background might be a bit shady. <laughs> well, most of his background is shady, so I think you're a perfect candidate. <laughs> well, I, listen, and I have Gator people, honey, in my life that you know you mess with me, and they'll never find you again. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from Jacksonville, right? All the way from Jacksonville. Uh, Jacksonville. I grew up near Tampa. And uh, then my dad was in baseball, my stepdad. And when my mother remarried, we moved from Florida to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, because my dad was with the Braves. And then we went to Atlanta. And then I became a star. No, I ended up in <laughs> Los Angeles to go, do acting, but I couldn't wait tables. So <clears throat> I became a credit manager. Yeah. Where I could use my acting ability. 20 years with JBL, right? That was the. You betcha. You betcha. Yeah. Pretty cool. It, you know, it, it's kind of like, it seems like yesterday. I mean, I know people say that all the time, but you, you kind of go, where did that time go? I mean, but you do have some kind of memories and stuff. And, um, and I do golf. So I'm up with the Duffers last week and 
I ran into a lady I worked with at JBL. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> like come full circle back around. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, so you were working there the whole time you were acting also, like when yes. you were doing those shows, like different strokes and all that stuff. And I never turned in. I didn't do vacation time because I saved that if I got a job or an audition. So I'd lose an hour here, take an hour there, take two hours here. And then I'd book out for three or four days. Um, so I, I tried to be as honest there. And I left that job because the the new boss that came in told me that acting didn't fit the corporate image. <laughs> and um, I, I went, let's see, I'm making this much here and this much here. <laughs> Screw the corporate image. Uh, but I was still too nervous and then went to work for another company. And I was there six months. And then that gentleman told me that I was a woman no more than a goat and to never contradict him again. Wow. Huh. I lasted 20 more minutes there. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, he's lucky he didn't get punched in the dick. I, well, I told the president of the company, I said, you're lucky I'm not suing you. Yeah. So, um, but you know what? It's kind of like when that door closes, another door opens. And since that time, I've been working full time. I've yeah. not had, a had to have a regular job. Knock wood. So. That's awesome. Yeah, you haven't uh, you haven't stopped working since. I mean, you're you're constantly in things. Well, I try to, and I mean, if there's anything I can say to anybody out there, um, you know, know your craft, but also be nice, be kind, because that is what's so important and what brings you back to the same casting person and the same uh, directors and producers and things. So, yeah. Well, another thing that uh, I want to talk about. Uh, well. Actually, you mentioned um, Studio City with Sean Cannon. Yes, I remember. Uh, I have. I didn't watch the. I didn't watch that this round of studying for you. But we. I interviewed Sean on my other on, on another podcast. Uh, you know, two years ago, and I remember watching that show. That was a that was a great show, like a behind the scenes of the uh, daytime television. It, it's so well written, produced, um, directed. I mean, it's really a really a good show. Um, I have been off because I've been working on other stuff. And of course I would go back. I adore Sean. It, it, it's, it, I'm there. It's great. I mean, and have you had Carolyn Hennessy on? No. Oh, and you really should have Carolyn Hennessy on. She, um, writer, um, and does a lot of theater. She and I were nominated against each other and everybody went, you're canceling each other out. So, uh, <laughs> but she's, uh, she's wonderful. And she just did a horror film. Um, where she went from this, you should look her up, but she went like from looking great as a, you know, a 50 year old, all of a sudden she was a hundred years old and pretty creepy looking. So it was, <laughs> she's amazing. So I'm touting other people now. I should just stick to business. Sorry. No, that's you all right. Can, you can say whatever you want. Thank we you very care. much. I'm in trans yeah, this... the, blue, the black lagoon over there. And I can't tell what the other one is. Uh, the the other one's back to the future. Oh. Uh, yeah. The creature from the black lagoon is one of my favorite movies. I love it to death. I'm a big universal. That, I mean, ever you since know, we were kids, we love that. Yeah. I mean, famous that monster like, stuff. I love it. It's great. I agree wholeheartedly. Right now I'm working. I, I work with the Thalians. I don't know if you know what that is. The Thalians is an organization started years ago with Debbie Reynolds and she passed away. Carrie was involved rudely is now, God, people, I told you I was busy. Please pick that up. Anyway, so um, it, the Thalians give money to Operation Mend at UCLA. We take care of our returning vets and their mental health, uh, which is so important for us to do. We just gave them $250,000, but we're going to give them a little bit more in December, I think. Um, but the poster reminded me we um, have a little gift shop that was donated to us by the lady that owns uh, the Hollywood Museum. And uh, it's the old Max Factor Hollywood Museum. And uh, there's so many of these posters that Todd Fisher donated to us from um, Debbie's collection. So. Oh, nice. that's awesome. So. Yeah. Normally I have actually uh, the Burbs poster behind me. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Uh, which yeah, I know was, you were. I know you were in that movie. Um, that was the craziest thing ever. Yeah, I, I do change my posters up, and I wish I would have left that one up for this interview, but <laughs> I didn't uh, because I do change them often. Uh, and I, I would say the Burbs is one of my favorite all-time movies. It was for me. It was I. I got hired virtually, and I said, "Well, what's the script? What am I doing?" <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, I got paid more than a day player. I had my own dressing room. I had my own contract. People were going, 
who is she? Well, I don't have her in my script. What is this? <laughs> and so what's his face? The director. Okay. Joe Dante. That's Joe what? Dante. Yeah. Yes. Joe Dante. Yeah. Joe said to me, I just want you to get out of the cab and start talking. Just start talking and waving your arms and yelling and telling him off and what's happening in my house. The house is burning down. My God, where is everybody? What all that stuff, which was hysterical because then as I'm leaving, Joe has the, the AD say, could you leave your clothes? Because I brought my I wore my own clothes. Could you leave your clothes? And because we'll put them on an extra because there's a couple long shots and things that we don't want to hold you for. I went, okay, fine. <laughs> And so they dry clean them, sent them back to me. Then <laughs> Joe hired me to be in Gremlins 2. Yes, you're in Gremlins 2 also. And if you notice when I'm standing in front of that glass thing getting ice cream, when the gremlin pops his head up and it's Woo! this kind of stuff. <laughs> and then Joe comes, has the AD go on because we have your dress. Could you leave your dress? <laughs> and I went, this is getting kinky now. This is really good. <laughs> so, yes, I've donated my clothes to <laughs> that's that's funny oh, that's couldn't great. you have said i'll just do the scenes can you just pay me a little extra <laughs> we, i probably could but you know if i you stand around all night and do stuff listen years ago i did the a-team my call time was 6 30 in the morning i was in a bathrobe and stuff and my hair was in rollers i was doing a stage show at night which the curtain went up at eight at 7 15 i in PM, I still hadn't worked. <laughs> so about 7.20, they call me up. I only had two words, from where? That was it. <laughs> so I say my face, people from the theater are calling, are you going to be there? And the theater makes an announcement. If a lady comes on with red hair, that's going to be our actress. If a lady comes with short blonde hair, that's going to be the lady who's our stage manager. We're, we're very sorry for this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I made it in time, but they forgot to put me in the credits. They forgot. To... Oh. It, so I got paid a lot of money for I think I got like $1,500 a word for the penalty. So, Wow. Yeah. So I have a lot of those short stories. <laughs> <laughs> but see, those the, are the stories. We... Scenes challenging. Yeah, but those are stories we like to hear because those are the things that people don't know about Hollywood. It, it's a crazy time. I, I like. I think I've told the story before. Working with, uh, my, I did Keanu Reeves. I believe it was his first film with Lori Laughlin, and it was called the, the Night Before. Oh yeah, pretty sure that's what it is. And when I got a call from Monica Swan, who was the casting director, my agent said she wants you to come over to uh, Avenue of the Stars at Suite so and so and so and so, and they want you to come dress as a sleazy Madonna bimbo. <laughs> I said, I, do they know who I am? What is this? Monica knows me. Anyway, so I am dressed in a short leopard thing. I have on pumps about this high that come, you know what me, pumps with little <laughs> socks with lace things. My hair <laughs> ran it up with a bow and jewelry and little glovey open fingers and uh, I go tripping through the- Stop it, you're getting me excited now, come on. <laughs> I did look damn good. Anyway, but when I got off the elevator, do you know who Stupefying Jones is from Little Abner? Uh, She's about six feet tall, bazoombas out to here, hair up to here. I mean, she was, um, uh, I think she was played in the movie by the first or second Catwoman. What's um, Julie Newmar? Okay. Uh, Julie I Newmar, get off yeah. the elevator and yeah. there's nothing about, but about 15 blonde Julie Newmars, <laughs> all dressed a lot better than me, but the same way. And I'm like, oh, crap, they didn't know who I was. This is not be good. So my turn to go in, because I figured at this point, I, I can't be humiliated anymore. <laughs> so in the room I go, and the director was like this. So Miss... <laughs> And he looks over at Monica Swan, and Monica goes, just wait. <laughs> this was my dialogue. <laughs> I know that they call it, Joe, but you don't actually blow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it went on from there. <laughs> I did get the part. 
<laughs> but I, and I was kind of like when I walked out of there and all those other ladies are still looking at me like I was like lost my mind. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. I say, if you're an actor, go for it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. There's a, there's a comedian that I listen to. Uh, I listen to his podcast all the time, Joey Diaz. And he said like this, the, the, zoom calls like the zoom auditions have ruined it for him because he used to always put a little something extra into the auditions like in the room like what you know when you were there in person with the people because you well, you have more space here i'm very limited i can't do a lot of shtick or a lot of extra stuff because i i don't i'm i'm framed so right. mm -hmm. so yes it does inhibit the actor and really, when you're having like 15 to 20 people auditioning for the same part, I don't think all of you are going to look at every single audition. Within the first five minutes, you know if you want us or you don't want us. Sure. And so it it's just makes it very tough for actors right now. Uh, going back to your laugh, that laugh, mm -hmm. I watched your, well, it was cut off on YouTube, but your appearance on uh, Johnny Carson show. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. I was having visions. <laughs> I think that that's another first for us. I think you might be our first uh, Carson uh, appearance guest. He was the absolute best and kind, and he listened to you. Yeah. He listened, I've, uh, he listened to the people, and then he responded to what he heard. Uh, he was a genius. I, yeah. So was that? were you really just that excited to be on the yes. show? Oh, my God. It was Johnny Carson. Are you out of your mind? Of course I was. <laughs> Oh, and, and Liv Ullman, who was there, what an actress she is. And they li liked each other so much. They talked together. So it was it was a great experience. That's great awesome. Experience. Very cool. Um, we're all over the place here. Um, <laughs> that's that's how we do things here. <laughs> I was going yeah. to say, I, I'm not sticking any script. I didn't get one. So oh, good. <laughs> yeah, we don't do it that way here. No, um, we have mentioned your uh, daytime television acting a little bit, though. So let's uh, let's talk about that. I'm not a fan of daytime talk or television shows, but uh, like I said, I did watch uh, Studio City with uh, you and Sean. I did not realize though how long Days of Lives has been on television. Uh, that's 1965, right? Yeah. When I looked up, I was like, "Wow, she's been in 503 episodes. Like, she, I, like she must have been in like a long, you know, a long time." And I, then I, I looked at 98. I started in 1998. Yeah, but the 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 I guess she's the lead actress in the show, Deidre Hall. She's mm -hmm. been in 5,044 episodes. <laughs> I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, maybe, I mean, it's amazing. But you know what? You said you weren't that fond of soap operas, but if you watch nighttime television, it is a soap opera. The difference is, is the story is generally completed in one episode, but there's a running thread that all goes through it. And that running thread is like a soap opera. And the soap operas, I think, lose a lot of stuff because first of all, they were daytime for housewives watching and kids would come home. And it's very generational. I have fans like grandmothers who are in the eighties and mothers who are in their sixties and kids who are in forties and then their, their children. So it's amazing. And they're probably the most loyal fans that you will ever meet. Um, and they go, uh, they go to events to see you. And the thing is, we come into their homes every single day. So we become family. Uh, it's the hardest work I've ever done. I was, I was just going to ask you that. How hard is it to do a soap opera that comes out every single day? Well, you, mem you have to memorize 40 to 50 pages a day, a day. And versus doing doing if i do a sitcom the script you read through on monday is generally changed a lot to the script you, you shoot on friday and even though they on friday they shoot one show and after dinner they'll shoot it again and the changes will come through for that so it goes very fast along those lines um but they're not memorizing 40 to 60 pages it's like what right. six not even 60 i think when you're doing a film, they're kind of do this. Let's do our master shot. Now let's do a three quarter shot. Now let's do a two shot. Now let's do your close up. Now let's do your close up. So, and that's a half a page, and we're taking a half a day to do it. So it's a lot different. <laughs> yeah. You can virtually go in with your page and memorize your page right there. Uh, you know, I don't like to do that. I like to work on it and get my character going, but it's 
it's like takes all day long to shoot something. So uh, again, soaps are hard. Is so are you shooting every day or is, or is there a rehearsal or no, you go in, you go in my, right now I'm not working on the show. I just finished my story. Um, when I go in, I'm going to get a call like for 530 because of COVID. Now we get tested. We have to go through the testing process, wait through that we're approved to do that. In the meantime, we're doing part of our hair and makeup ourselves. Once we're approved, we go into hair, then we go into makeup, then we go into wardrobe. Then it, we sit and wait until it's our time. Then we go in and we shoot all our scenes at one time. And it could be at the end of the day. If there is a scene in the kitchen, but we're shooting most of it in the bar, I may shoot all the bar in the morning and then still have to shoot like at five o'clock in the afternoon to finish up the scenes in the kitchen. So wow. it's a long day. It's a hard day. Um, and if you're working two or three shows a week, that's a, you know, you don't leave your sofa. <laughs> just constantly memorizing and memorizing. And because it's so much shot every day, it's done so fast that you don't get five or six takes. Hmm. So if, if my advice to you, if you get the ruins wrong, sneeze or cough. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to start over. But, oh, okay. Yeah, but only in those cases. But uh, generally, we have wonderful directors on there. It's shot with four cameras. Uh, I mean, it's just, they're amazing. It's uh, the, the, the crew is family as well. So it's nice. Yeah. I, I shouldn't say that I don't like them. I've never seen them. So <laughs> shame on you. Yeah, I've seen them. You know, you're home sick from school and there's nothing else on. You just, you know, when you're a kid, you watched it. And, and every once noticed. in a while, you get one of those episodes where they'd be like, uh, the sister would come back from the dead or something. Oh, yeah. Well, like, listen, Deidre Hall, was, what, she was inhabited by the devil. Two yeah, times. there's those episodes. And that, so it's amazing. Yeah. But yes. It, or somebody comes back and it's the long lost twin. So yeah, the <laughs> twin thing is big on soap operas, Casey. Yeah. I don't know why you missed this, but no, uh, no, the devil possession and twins. So creative. Yeah. yeah. I do I remember that. when I was when I was a kid, my mom watched the show with um, Victor, a guy named Victor. That's, uh, um, that's Young and the Restless. Oh, Young and the Restless. Okay. Listen, my grandmother was a diehard Young and the Restless uh, fan. My husband and I went to visit her. She wouldn't go to lunch with us. He said, no, no, no. My story is on. So oh. we went out to lunch. Oh. She watched oh. her story and bought her a VCR. We came in. My husband hooked it all up and said, okay, now we can go to lunch. We couldn't go to lunch the next day because she had to see that that thing worked. Our, mm -mm, she was yeah. not missing her story <laughs> so finally she got used to it and it was fine then you know, but. I, I love how people used to call out the stories too oh i don't miss my stories i yeah, don't miss my the stories. stories yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and on the show uh days of our lives that's the show you're on right mm -hmm. um you were hired as uh, our fans will know him uh, from Friday the Thirteenth. Kevin Spiritus. Yes, you're his. You play his wife on the show, I play right? His wife. Yes. Yes. And you were you were known as TV Guide called you the full figured bitch goddess of daytime <laughs> television. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it was, you know, it was fun because um, it, I think people didn't expect that here was this gorgeous typical soap opera guy, and then here was me. I'm not a size two. I'm a, I have the zero on the other side of the two instead of in front of the two. So um, people were shocked, but, uh, and, and I wasn't under contract when I first came in. And uh, after my first show aired, I was put under contract because the fans called in and went crazy. God bless each and every one of you. And then we went on and we were, I mean, we were constantly keeping, I was, I had my hands down his pants and I put a hot tub in his office that, I mean, we were like, Woo! Happy, happy time. But we also took advantage of people, but it was their own fault if they let us take advantage of them. Yeah. I've heard you say that on other interviews about how people would uh, write in and call into the network saying, you know, bring this character back. Or um, I never thought that that worked uh, until I started recently watching a new uh, pro wrestling company that's on uh, every Wednesday night. And occasionally like tony khan the owner of the company will tweet out like thanks to whoever tweeted this you know we should have been doing this for a long time like if they i never thought that that stuff worked but especially with social social media now it, it i mean it's crazy what was the um the show with um uh, skeech ulrich 
uh, bomb went off and I can't remember the name of the show, but the fans, when they were starting to let that show go, the fans went crazy. They sent bales of hay and all kinds of stuff to the producers to bring my show back. What is wrong with you people? So um, the fans do have power because they can always switch channels or switch yeah. whatever streaming station they're on. So um, I'm very grateful that now Peacock uh, picked up days. So we know we've got a good home there, um, which is going to give us some more stuff. And because now we're streaming, we can say a few more bad words and um, oh, yeah. we can show a little more. Hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Very so cool. There'll so be a that, lot more stuck in face. <laughs> well, well, so that changes Casey? with Casey. I think we might have to start watching this show now. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. People say daytime, and people are sleeping with each other, and you know, this one's cheating on that one. This one's cheating mm -hmm. on that one. It's like, <laughs> Lord, have mercy. <laughs> yeah, but if we're gonna get some more, you know, uh, dirty talk yeah, and some so better too. imagery, yeah. I think we might be interested. I uh -huh. think this yeah. might open the whole thing take up to look, everybody. Take a look at it. Urge your friends to turn in. So, yeah, I'm yeah. I mean, just really picking up some stuff. And I'm working with one of the directors, uh, so Sonia Bongenero. I never can pronounce it right. I apologize, <laughs> Sonia. We have a couple projects we were hoping we can pitch to um, pit, uh, Peacock right now. Um, not in the soap opera genre, but more in the Christmas thing along some of the, like the Hallmark things, but a little bit more edgy. Mm -hmm. so. Cool. Speaking of uh, Christmas, uh, we'll just roll right in. Nice segue there. Christmas. Yeah. You worked with our friend Richard really a few times and uh, one of the Christmas, I can't remember the, the name of it uh, off the top of my head, but you reminded me of it by saying Christmas. Uh, you played did, Richard, you I played did, Mrs. Uh, Claus, right? Yeah, I played uh, In Search of Santa Paws. That, that was it. Yeah. Star yeah. Christmas. There's, I think we did three of them, but Richard and I also did Hatchet together. Yes, that's, I, that's, 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 that's all my list to talk about, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hatchet is one of my favorite, is one of my favorite horror movies. We had the and, best, uh, time, so. yeah. Richard, me, my, my nephew, I, we just went to see, um, the new uh, horror movie that just came out uh, last night. Um, Jesus, that's how good it was. I can't even. Terrifier 2. Uh, but we laugh at your scene with Richard in Hatchet all the time. When you ask him, uh, how are you doing, honey? I'm so cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah. like that. And then your kill in that is just so brutal mm -hmm. it, well it was one i think i uh what's the big magazine the uh, horror magazine they gave me best kill they fangoria? Left, I won was best it Fang kill. It was fangoria uh, most likely yeah it was great i mean and we i mean it, truly when he's saying it's cold it, it was probably like 50 something degrees <laughs> and we were being sprayed with water that was <laughs> warm <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, and then of course, once your clothes get soaked, you're freezing. So yeah, but we had a good time. What was that? What was doing that kill like? Do they have to make a whole? Uh, where Ray and I, had, I love I the had, practical I effects. A, I yeah. did have to go and have my head made. Um, <clears throat> so you sit through all that nose things up here, and you know, and, and you're going like this. Hurry! What time? How much time now? <laughs> Um, and I think um, Adam Green still has the head sitting in his office. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we did that. But that was, you know, when uh, the monster comes out of the cave, you know, he literally, I, he literally had to put his hands in, I am, in my mouth. Um, and then the cut when the fake one goes off and stuff like yeah. that. So yeah, it was. Yeah, gross. it's brutal. <laughs> it's a ghost. <laughs> But but it's a good movie. We like it. It's awesome. I love. Yeah, it's one. Of, like I said, yeah. it's one of my favorite uh, horror movies there is. Um, let's get into uh, a few more of these shorts that you did that I that I watched here recently. Taco Tuesday. I just watched. Uh, it's a Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge uh, short. Yeah, the Easter Seal uh, people offer this um, challenge every year, and what it is is like you. You get your script on Friday, you shoot it on Saturday, and it must be sent in by the end of Sunday. And it, they give you things like, I think Taco Tuesday had to have a clock in it, had to have a superhero. Um, I can't remember all the things that go in that, but I had done that one. I have also done, um, try and think of the other one, but I, th I don't think people realize that the disabled community, and they are not disabled by any means. 
Yeah. Um, the, the diversity of them, they're amazing. Um, and the little girl that was in I, ours who was on American Horror Story, um, she just did a, a off Broadway run. Um, she's amazing. And I yeah. mean, it's, 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 it's only six minutes long. It's so funny. I, I was laughing hysterically. It was so funny. I'm trying. I'm trying to think what the other one was. Oh, the other one was called the Second Date. Did you see that one? No, I didn't see that one. That's with um. Oh gosh, I'm going to screw up names again, so I'm not even going to say it. The young man that starred in Speechless in the wheelchair. Okay. He plays my son in that one. But if he rolls his, he's had a bad date. But if he rolls his wheelchair backwards, he can go back in time and change what happened and roll forward and be in another situation. And then he gets wackadoo rolling it the wrong way. And suddenly I'm black with the curly hair and I'm not the right person. Then I'm the girlfriend. And then I'm the, everybody's changing people because he's rolling that wheel like this. And things are going like this. And, you know, we, and it's, a, it's amazing. Uh, Nick Novicki is the um, person that works with Easter Seals and coordinates everything. So. Great. Yeah, there. Uh, I'll find the link to that one that you just mentioned, and I'll put the link for Taco Tuesday in uh, in the description. Really good stuff. Well, it it really is, and the fact that Easter Seals sponsors it and gives everyone the opportunity. So you may have someone with Downs working in front of the camera or behind the camera, um, uh, working. Uh, when we had one young lady that was our clapboard person, keeping tabs of stuff like that. There's, they're able. You, we can't, keep, right. you know, keep that old stereotype around. So, right, yeah. Uh, another great short that I, I fell in love with. Uh, I've had to research this a little bit. Uh, Vinyl Child with you and Creed Brown. <laughs> oh my God, Chica! It's based on a real person. Yeah, I, I, so I researched this a little bit because I, I was like, oh my God, because I saw that in the beginning about the, um, based on a true story. Um, I don't know how, did you meet the, those people at all or? We were going to, but we never went down there. The director was trying to arrange going down to meet them and stuff. We never got to um, do it. And if you notice the young lady that was our daughter in that one. Yep, was she also was also. In acting, in acting dead. dead yes yeah, yeah. She's, she's got a wonderful podcast too um, oh great and i and now i'm gonna forget the name of that one too but she um uh she works for shark tank a lot she's uh, one of the producer people over there and stuff so she really parlays the things that she does a wonderful little girl actress okay really. well tell tell everyone what uh vinyl child is is about vinyl child is about a couple they have an, a daughter but they also have a son who's a Cabbage Patch doll. <laughs> and the Cabbage Patch doll is their son. He goes to restaurants with them. He goes on, he goes to the amusement parks and rides a roller coaster with them. He does everything with them. They treat him as if that he was a live child. Um, yeah. And they, it's based on a real couple. Um, and we try not to make fun because you never know what's going through people's minds, how things. Right. Work. Well, so, so that's why I researched this a little bit and cause you guys did such a great job. Creed is fabulous. You're, you're fantastic in this. So they were on different shows. They were on like Anderson Cooper. They were on um, like my weird behavior on TLC or whatever. And that the particular short that you guys filmed the, with Kevin, the doll, or I shouldn't say doll because they don't say doll. The the their child Kevin, yeah. um, that was one of the skits that they like portrayed on one of the shows because they were trying to hype up business because they own the Cabbage Patch Museum in I think it's in Maryland or New Jersey. Well, what's interesting is they wouldn't let us use the Cabbage Patch doll. So, really. <laughs> anyway yeah it, i mean i love that i love i that was so good that short was so good it's only i think well, 20 25 minutes for him and taking him out i mean just everything was this and when somebody asks him a question and creed answers for him well having this having having the young girl come out of his bedroom because he's he's uh matured <laughs> oh my god that was so good <laughs> <laughs> so in all of the the research that i've uh done you know for this uh chat that we're having i i haven't watched a bad a bad movie and some of the some of the parts that you 
have had are very short in some of the movies that I've watched. Um, but they weren't like it wasn't a bad movie by any stretch of the means, you know. Um, did for you one, you like horror? Did you watch The Vagrant? Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's on my list. <laughs> so good. I, I'm like, I, I, it was one of the most confusing things for me. Um, because <laughs> I was, it was like, I, I thought we were kind of making a, a fun, kind of punny kind of thing, and then but the director had us very serious about it, and so, um. I had the see here. This is for you, sexy over here in your blue shirt with your hat backwards, <laughs> not saying a word. Um, <clears throat> uh-huh. I, this the when I was doing uh, uh, the young kid who I can't think of his name, Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton. When I, huh? Yeah, when I was doing Bill Paxton, um, I was doing it the way you see it in the movie. But then I got. They told me not to do it that way. They wanted it serious and dramatic. It was just, this was just tragic what I was doing. I mean, I was giving head to the guy. Excuse me if I hope I can say that here. <laughs> you can I say whatever know. you want. I'm like, yeah. this is, you know, this woman lives by herself and stuff. This is what, not tragic. Well, I, anyway, but it's what the director had. So, like, a month later, I had to go back and reshoot it with a new crew and new people that didn't know me. And I'm now having to do it the way I originally did it. <laughs> Giving head to Bill Paxton again, <laughs> him yelling, Whoop, she's not under my second pair of underwear. <laughs> Stop it. So, yeah, I've had some of those wild times. I'll tell you, if you are if you have a story where you're giving head to Bill Paxton, that's a great goddamn story. <laughs> sort of woke you up over there, huh, babe? Yeah. <laughs> have you seen this one, Ray, the, the, the Vagrant? A- absolutely, yeah. Of course. This is an awesome movie. Yeah, I just recently watched this. Uh, so good and we, and we lost bill too soon I yeah mean, oh absolutely that's a tragedy he was such a good actor amazing i mean and a nice person a nice person so yeah yeah some people you can tell like uh, on screen when they're like for for tv guide to call you the tv or you know the full-figured bitch goddess of daytime <laughs> television like i just since i've never seen you in those roles i just can't believe that for one second <laughs> It, but it just, like it seems weird doesn't it yeah now wait yeah. a second i'm sure that you've seen some smiling sweet ladies who are bitch goddesses <laughs> i'm not this gonna comment true. on that <laughs> allegedly we like allegedly we like this. to say allegedly yes <laughs> uh one one of the movies i just recently watched that uh, you have a small role in but a very pivotal role in the movie uh, all, another great, great movie, The Hero with Sam Elliott. Oh, and who would not give us? I'll do it. I'll do a line. I'll walk by <laughs> just so I can meet Sam Elliott. I don't care. So, yes, yeah. it was fun. I mean, that was fun. And he, too, is a nice guy. And yeah. I don't think I'll ever ride Yellowstone because or the old thing, the Yellowstone 1880 something. What is the one he's doing? Anyway. Uh, yeah. Unless they let me be a Marjorie Main kind of character and drive a big old wagon of some kind, I'm, I can't get my ass on a horse. That's not happening. Yeah, if you haven't seen the hero, uh, check that out. Patrick has a small role in it, but it's uh, it's it's like kind of the turning point of his uh, the second half of his career in the in that movie. I mean, it's, it, I've been very uh, you know lucky. To, uh, some of the roles are pivotal; they're small, but. When I, you know, coaching other actors and doing things, it's always like saying, yes, it may be small, but it's your role. Make it the best possible thing you can do and be memorable. I mean, there are a lot of small roles that people don't even remember was it were in the movie. So um, always make it your own, you know, know it, know that character coming, going backwards, upwards, and what led her to have that luncheon, why she wanted to see him besides the fact that he's so gorgeous and you wanted to look at him. So, <laughs> Yeah, the even though you have small roles, like people still remember. Like I, you know, uh, my friends always ask who are you interviewing this weekend, and I'll show them pictures of who we're interviewing. And almost all of my friends that uh, I sent your picture to this week, oh, I remember her from Seinfeld. And you were only in two, you know, two small roles in Seinfeld. I was very lucky in that one too. Yeah. And, that, and that's a gift that keeps on giving because now it's streaming somewhere. So it's like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> So uh, you did uh, some voice acting in uh, Rango. Oh, which, my, uh, my same which, old character like this. Yep. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> yeah, my my son, uh, he's ten now, and we've watched that movie probably, I gotta say, eight thousand times. Love that movie. The animation was so incredibly good too. I mean, when you and it's it, not just the animation; it's written really well. Yeah, written really well and stuff. But that was that was before um, I had to do a audition on tape, mm -hmm. uh, you know, first, and they sent that in, and then I got called to go in and meet the director. And at that point, he had me and he had me do two roles. At roles, I can't remember the. Uh, I, I did. May, what's you did Maybell? Delilah. Delilah. And, uh, Delilah was a little more modern, but the other was like, oh, get this out of my back. You know, that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Absolutely. They were fun. It, those were good. And I also did. <laughs> See what you did to Chihuahua? A, a Chihuahua who hears something down the road she's going to bark at. And mm -hmm. the terrier who doesn't pay any damn attention to what you tell her to do. <laughs> Did uh, did you do all the the lines for that by yourself, or did they get you in a room with other actors, or how'd that go? <laughs> we went over to a sound stage, and we were given costume pieces, huh? and the entire cast was there working together, blocked out like we were doing animation. And I remember Johnny Depp at one portion when he's getting direction, and um, <laughs> Johnny looks at the director and goes. In this animation, <laughs> yeah, but I want you to like shoot the gun and back over here. And then we, there's a whole big dance thing where all the people are dancing. The town's mm -hmm. dancing. Mm -hmm. um, on that sound stage, they hired a choreography to come in. We're all dressed with bonnets and things, and we had to dance and dance around so that the animators could kind of see how people's bodies moved. Just, it was, and then we go over behind battens and tape it. It was crazy. What? Very little was done <laughs> on a sound stage. Very little. Huh. That's crazy. So, have you done voiceover work before? Prior to that, uh, I've done. I did. I was a. I was a sheep and a chicken in um, the first Babe. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of the others. I mean, uh, I, I guess what I was. How different is it? How different was Rango from the other ones? Like, did did, did they have court? <laughs> Well, when, when, I, when I when I did Babe, Babe, we were on a sound stage with a loop group, so the whole room was there, and there were some people that were picking up some voices, and then others like we were, ah, ram you, all around the microphone doing that, and then you know, like oh, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 that was laying an egg there, so um. <laughs> It's just kind of like those are the kind of things they do. And I by no means am an excellent um, voiceover person. I have a lisp and I know it, which prevents a lot of times unless the character, you know, playing a witch like, oh, sir, 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 right, like that kind of stuff. But no. So I've been very grateful to get those positions. So uh, another role that I want to talk about your role as Roseanne. In Roseanne and Tom, the TV movie. I just recently watched that. Great job as Roseanne. Thank you. Thank you. Did, Roseanne, uh, I ran into Roseanne on an elevator. Yeah, that was going to be my question. <laughs> she said, she went, I liked what you did, but you cried too much. So that was it. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm very grateful to her because she wasn't unkind to me. She wasn't very kind to Denny Dillon, who did the Fox portrayal of it. Uh, and Stephen, who played... Um, uh, Tom. Tom, sorry. He um he's recently passed away. So oh. um you know so he did an, he did a great job too. He was really well. Just and all he, the mannerisms of the, with being all coked up and all that with with the nose and the Tom Arnold does. He was just, amazing. That was it was a really good movie. And and I just was I was at dinner and Tom Tom Arnold was with us and he had his two kids with him and he's a little calmer than he was. <laughs> It was very nice. He was very nice. And he was very nice to me. He knew my work and what was going on, too. Um, and, and then I did uh, I did an episode of, of Roseanne playing Dan's dream, <clears throat> dream lover. So which was fine. So. Yeah. Was that uh, that that was on my notes? Was that before or after you played? That was her? way before. Way before. Before her. Yeah. I thought it was funny in the, in the show or in the movie that you did with her, um, how they were talking about behind the scenes, how they could do the show without her. Like when they wanted to get rid of her in the beginning, and then they ended up eventually, you know, twenty years later or whatever it was, getting rid of her. 
in the new season, in the Connors or whatever it is yeah, now. I, I think, we, you know, it, it's sometimes we let our mouths overload our ass and we shouldn't, you know, <laughs> think before you speak kind of thing, as my grandmother would say. So, yeah. Unfortunate incidents like that lead to losing it. But I, I heard she's got a show coming up for something, but I merely don't know about it. But Sure. Yeah, I hope I hope everything works out. I always liked Roseanne. I, well, listen, my experience with her on the set when I was working the show and then my experience when she told me that she didn't she loved what I did, but she didn't like <laughs> me crying so much. So um, but I can only do what the director asks me to do. So. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, let's see. The only other two things that I have on my list are. I'm uh, exhausted. Only... I'm exhausted. <laughs> Damn it. I've worked a lot. I'm exhausted. Uh, you were only in the willies for a second, but uh, this this was the first time I ever saw that movie. What a good movie. Well, and listen, I can't even remember half of what that movie was about because I think I was 10. I'm not sure. <laughs> like, that was a while back. That was a while back. It's like. Yeah, it was like just. Yeah, kids telling uh, telling each other they were camping out and telling each other uh, ghost stories and different stories. Uh, I, what somebody said to me, how was it working with? And I can't think of the actress saying, "What the hell's wrong with my head right now?" Um, and I haven't had a drop to drink. What are you drinking? Um, uh, beer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what I. Do. I have this thing. It's called. Uh, do you like Moscow Mules? <laughs> oh, my favorite. So Cheetos, I found this. I found this in uh, Florida here. I don't know where they sell it, but it's called New City Mule, and it's a ginger beer um, that tastes just like Moscow Mules. A ginger beer. Was there vodka involved in that? Uh, I don't think so. No, it's just hard ginger beer with fresh lime. I'm going lime. with him. I'm going with him because he drinks liquor. I'm going with him. <laughs> That's fine. I, I drink liquor when I feel like it. That's you know. I think everybody should, unless they be responsible and be responsible. Hey, I'm trying to be responsible so that I can talk to you in a normal way, so that I'm not all messed up. Because uh, well, if I was drinking liquor, well. <laughs> if I was <laughs> drinking liquor tonight, I wouldn't make any sense. So. <laughs> I'm sticking yeah. to Bud Light tonight, so that's uh, what we're doing. I've, I have been so blessed, and I've worked so much, but <laughs> let me say, when I started to tell you, I somebody said, oh, what was it like working with Kevin Spacey? <laughs> I went, I never worked with Kevin Spacey. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. <laughs> yes, you did. No, I didn't. Were you in Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil? I said, yes, I was. Oh, my God, I worked with Kevin Spacey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you're in you're in so many different things. You're not like in um, scenes with everyone. Like you can be in a movie with you know. Like the other thing I have on my list is in the Line of Fire uh, with Clint Eastwood and John Malkovich. But um, you know, you weren't in a scene with Clint Eastwood, so maybe you didn't even see him there. Well, uh, well, the, the reason I got to do Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil is that Clint liked the scene in the bank. From in the line of fire, the yeah, I did. It's a so, it's a great yeah. scene. That that was one of my favorite kids, or yeah, favorite kids, favorite movies as a kid, in the line of fire. And I just recently wait, watched wait. it again. Favorite movie when you were a kid? <laughs> 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 okay, I'm I'm good now. I'm good now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But I just recently watched it again, and I forgot how good that movie is. I think it was some of Clint Eastwood's best work when he's just looking out, the camera's kind of behind him when he's looking out on the, I think it's the uh, Washington monument or something. Just from the things that are happening from his back were amazing. Um, and the things sitting on the step, it just, she's going to look back now. <laughs> she's going to look back. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Some subtle little wonderful things that uh, I thought were wonderful in that. So, yeah. Excellent movie. And uh, I've heard you talk about it in other shows, but uh, tell everyone what it was like uh, getting your neck broken by John Malkovich. Well, I mean, he was wonderful. I mean, I, I don't know if you, if you remember the story that I told him. I was doing a stage show uh, at the time, and one of the young girls that was in the chorus was like, grab me by the things. If I don't get to meet John Malkovich, I'll kill you. <laughs> so, um, I mean, so I went and asked, I said, could I have a guest? on set um no pictures nothing like this so she came and she i introduced her to john and i said john she's a theater major at ucla and they talked for like two and a half hours while they're setting stuff up and throwing my my roommate mary van arsdale against the mantle while she, that was her first acting job and she spent all day getting shoved into that mantle and strangled um 
but uh, when it was time and you'd be talking to john you'd be yeah like this and they go now we're ready for you john he'd go <laughs> but when he was breaking our neck he would work with the stunt guy was there and going we're gonna go one two three we're not gonna go and three we're gonna go one two three so we so nobody would get hurt and yeah. um, and then the fake hit for that way hits you down like that when my mother saw that movie um may she rest in peace she um she called she, she couldn't wait to get home to call me she was so upset by that <laughs> yes, so, yeah so so you did a great job in it i i guess i kind of scared her a little bit she didn't do anything when i did hatchet so what the hell <laughs> so you do all your own stunt work <laughs> Uh, well, let's just say I well, like in Speed Two. I mean, when the glass comes through the thing, the ship hit ship ship hits the thing, and the glass is coming in, and you know, everybody's rolling around. Um, they, I said, I'll do it. And I, you know, and we did do it. Um, Jan was going to get a stunt double. I said, I can do that. I can roll off the sofa. There's nothing. I mean, I'm not dead. So I was like crazy. So. Awesome. I would never uh, take work. I I would never take work if I thought I would get hurt because there are people that are trained to do that. And I have such great respect for our, our stunt people. So I would never, ever take a job from them. If it was something that would have re required somersaults or something like that, I wouldn't have done it yeah, at we, all. So. We hear that a lot from actors when we talk to them, that uh, how they appreciate the stunt people so much because they're trained to do that. But what I've talked to stunt people, you know what their training is, is, you know, one day I figured I could just throw myself through a plate glass window and survive it. So I figured I'd be a stunt man. <laughs> like that's their training. So, but I'm not throwing myself through a plate glass window. <laughs> so that they're trained, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> and I'm not leaping off anything. I mean, I did a commercial for I don't even remember what the hell it was for, and this was I was supposed to be yelling in the top of the building because fire was shooting out and they had hairsprayed my head. My hair was ratted up like this and the flames are shooting out. I go, you guys, this stuff is flammable. What the yeah. hell? What the hell? So, you know, but then it was like, I don't, I can't, well, can't remember the commercial, but then I had to jump, but I didn't have to jump. They put me on the ground, hoisted me up and then dropped me down. No, no, no. I'm not stunt person. Uh -uh. No. <laughs> Great respect for whatever whatever yeah. can of beer they drank to leak through that window. I'm off of that training. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we talked to uh, Gary Davis. He was a big time stunt man in uh, Hollywood. He said he's never even smoked a joint. So poor little he's thing. A... <laughs> <laughs> Patrika, this has been great. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, been awesome. Yeah, one other. I, so I, I like I said, everything that I watched uh, wasn't disappointed with anything. One other movie that I have on my list that was really good that I watched uh, was It Takes Two. It was one of your early early roles where you played uh, DD. You were very good in that. Yes, that was. A, I'm I'm trying to download when that was. That was. Um, uh, that was it. We shot it in Texas, and one of the one of the stars of that was a big soap actor. Um, <laughs> Why the hell am I having a problem with names? And I didn't have anything to drink. Um, he now lives in, in Denmark, I believe it is, or Copenhagen, somewhere over there in one of those places. But he was a big star on GH. And when oh, he wow. retired, he moved over there. But that was, um, and then uh, the, two, the two main actors have been on so many things like that. It's, it's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It's like, it's like when I, I did a show, I think it was called you again with um, John Stamos years ago um, with um, the actor who, um, what the hell is wrong? <laughs> uh, Jack Klugman. Um, uh, Klugman's awesome. Was it, was it Klugman? I, now I'm, I, I'm not sure if it was Jack Klugman. I did, that name just popped into my head, but it was called You Again. And it was, and John Stamos still remembers me as being the person in the checkout line from then. So, I mean, that was very flattering and stuff. So, yeah. So. Awesome. So I like to ask uh, our guests this. Is there anything that we mentioned here today that uh, you want people to, to know about? Like, uh, you know, we mentioned a lot of your roles here on the podcast today, but is there anything that you're really proud of that we didn't mention? 
I know I don't really think so. I think you I'm like going, damn, I'm old and trying to do a lot of stuff. Um, no, um, everything I've said has been great. I mean, if you're going to support something, please, you know, adopt a, a dog if you're going to do it or a cat, you know, and spade or neuter your own. And those are kind of important to me because I work with a lot of animal rescue people. Um, and um, and the Thalians I told you about taking care of our returning vets, those are important things. But, um, and I'll continue, I'll probably be one of those people in the coffin where I'm banging to get out because I'm not retiring yet. So um, I, I think everything I've said, I've probably said a hundred times before, but some other things will come, if I get a little older, things will come back to me. <laughs> Names won't, but some other things will come. Well, thank you again, Patrika. Um, I always like to get everyone's plugs at the end of the show, where, where can people find you? And if uh, you're working on anything new that you want people um, to know I'm about. I'm not working now, but you can always find me on Instagram um, as Darbo Patrika and Twitter is Patrika Darbo and Facebook is just Patrika Darbo. No A, just Patrika Darbo. No A. I don't know about that one. Mm -mm. So, <laughs> uh, and, you know, and the, I, as I said, I promote the rescuing and I promote the Thalians right now and our elks. I'm also an elk. Great. <laughs> so, anyway. Thank you keep again, busy. Patrika. Keep active. keep active. Keep active. Awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do this for us. Thank you. How do I turn this on? I'll, I'll just uh, yeah. kick you out of the, oh, I see. the room. Leave the, I see. Leave the studio. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Bye.